keen-eyed viewers saw this Epiphone Thunderbird in my collection and asked me to talk about it. So, this is my first video on demand. Let's talk about a Thunderbird. Let's see the specifications. Let's talk about what it meant to be. And uh, most of all, Thunderbirds are cool. First things first, uh, besides the intro, I won't be playing this bass. Main reason, and if Glenn sees this, he's going to laugh at me, and rightfully so. While this bass has been my workhorse, my go-to bass for years, since I uh, gathered some other basses that are uh, more premium, that I like more, so this one was forgotten a bit. And the strings are so old and rusty that I'm considering visiting my doctor after this video to get a tetanus shot. So I'll save you the rest of the horrible sounds, but uh, let that be a reminder. Even if you don't play a bass for a while, check up on it. Uh, make sure the strings are well, because this is something I should have spotted before beginning this video. Anyway, here we are and I'm not going to abandon my base again. Something new as well, now I can do the old switch bitch trick and I can say camera A, go to camera B. And then, hello there, we have a close up. Or I can say camera B, go back to A. And then I look up and I see you again, or more specifically, you see me again because naturally I can't see you. I'm not in the NSA. But I would like to see you, I would like to meet you. Let's meet up one day, shall we? Goody. Anyway, I'm stalling. Let's go back to the base. So, camera B, up to you. Hey there, camera B again. So, uh, base in close-up. First of all, let's have a look at these pickups. Because this is why I loved this base for so long. A uh, brief description of bass pickups and something I learned about uh, bass pickups thanks to these two. Uh, this kind of pickup is called a soapbox. Now I figured bass pickups will be like guitar pickups. Actually, uh, switch back to camera uh, A. Yeah, hey camera A. So uh, I'll do the talking to you and then we can go back to the close-up. Anyway, so we have the pickups. And these are called soapbox pickups, as I just said, I'm repeating myself. Hey, longer video, too bad for you, or so much the better, who knows. Back on track, so uh, pickups on a bass. Earlier on, I thought it was going to be like a guitar. A guitar, you have single coils, you have humbuckers, and then you have P90s in the middle, which are just fatter single coils. So I figured, okay, on a bass, you have the J-types, single coil, you have the humbuckers, like the Music Man, okay, you also have the split coil, like a precision bass, but anyway, I figured between the split coil and the, uh, sorry, between the single coil and the humbuckers, clearly the soapbox is just like a P90. Looks a bit like him. Alas, not the case. What is a soapbox? Let that be the lesson of today. Soapbox pickups are just the name of a type of casing around your pickup. So you can have a J type pickup beneath here. You can have the humbucker kind. You can have the split coil kind. It's just about the casing. So anyway, uh, this Thunderbird, thunder in the name, you need a lot of thunder. These have a, a kind of humbucker type base pickups. Back to the close-up. So, uh, what makes these special? Actually, the Thunderbirds have several kinds of humbucker, uh, well, well, humbucker or soapbox type pickups. And I'm going to go even closer. If you look well, you can see that these. Yeah, here you can see it well. They are there's a groove in here, and this is why I like these. It makes it so nice and easy to put your thumb down and just stroke your base. Same thing here, perfect. 
Uh, the more recent models I've seen have uh, just rounded edges. It's probably a lot harder to manufacture these than to just press a nice square box, but hey, uh, I have one with good pickups, so I'm happy with that. Uh, while we're down here, let's have a look at the knobs. We have a uh, volume for the bridge, a volume for the neck, or let's make that. We have a volume for the neck and a volume for the bridge, and then a master tone. Uh, in the Pro Series, you'll have uh, four knobs, so it's just uh, two masters and two volumes. But hey, who needs tone? We're bass players, we go to the low end, and that's enough. And with another small camera trick, let's go to camera C, which is actually just camera B that I repositioned to have a closer look at the headstock. So, camera C, take it away. And here we are with this. Let's, yeah, do it like this so we don't have too much of a reflection. This is our headstock and it's quite a big one, as you can see. No, I know, that's what she said. That's Henning's channel. Here we try to have some professionalism, so let's not go into that's what she said, shall we? So headstock, with the amount of dust you can actually see how long it's been since I played this bass. But hey, it used to be my favorite. I still have a special place in my heart for it. It's just not my main bass anymore. Back to the main wide angle. Uh, last technical detail about this bass. The original Gibsons used to be neck true. Now the original or official, whatever the case. Now the Thunderbirds both by Gibson and Epiphone are bolt on. Uh, this one always was this way. It just has, let's go to the close up, a nice four. Uh, yeah, that's focused, that's always better. That's just four uh, bolts in there. And now that we have the close up here, yes, there is tape here. And um, let's go up. There's a band aid there. Let's talk about it, shall we? Enough about the details. Let's uh, go into the anecdotes, shall we? Um, first things first the tape here and uh, the band aid on the back. Anecdote number one, actually already passed by in one of the uh, in one of the videos. I can't remember which one, but hey, just look at them all and you'll see. Uh, I have these nice strap-ons. Hey there, Michiel's inner uh, mind talking straight to you. That one was a Freudian slip of the tongue. My bad, Michiel didn't invent that one, but hey, it happened. We're all out of seal. Let's uh, go back to the base, shall we? That's weird. Anyway, so as I was saying, we have these strap locks here. And why do you need strap locks and tape? Well, uh, during one of the shows I was playing, actually the very first live one with this bass, um, not only did the strap lock come undone, the whole uh, screw that had the strap lock in came undone, and away went my bass, and away went the logic of having strap locks happens. It's not always spinal tap, it's sometimes broken handles. Second anecdote, the band-aid on the back. And that's going to be another thing on the base. Anyway, this nice little band-aid makes this a personal base for me. Uh, one of our rehearsals, uh, the bass, uh, well I'm the bass player, but the drummer decided to play some bass and I decided to play some drums. Always nice to switch around. And after playing, he accidentally knocked over the bass. Shit happens, bass goes to the ground, bass gets seriously dented and chipped. What are you going to do? He was nice about it, he offered to buy me a new one straight away, but it's accidents happen. So as heartfelt as I was at the moment, it happened. Just having that little band-aid there, let's go back to the close-up just makes it so much more personal and nice. I mean, this is the only, well, I believe this is the only Thunderbird with a Band-Aid, and I have it. So there you have it. Well, not there you have it, but you know what I mean. 
third anecdote. You know how the Beatles all looked alike and everybody loved the Beatles? I have a theory that if you dress sharply, and I don't mean in suits, but if you just make an effort to appear nice on stage, you gain credit with the audience. If you play bad and you look bad, you won't last a full song. If you play bad, but you look nice, you might get credit enough to start a second song. Of course, the goal is to play good whether or not you look bad. But hey, we can't all be winners, so just cheat a bit. Always make sure you look good. Anyway, my idea of looking good on stage. Guitar player used to play on a black explorer. I used to play on this one, both oddly shaped instruments, so I decided, you know what I need? I need a black Thunderbird and that will match. So I went online, I looked for one and I found it, the Nikki 6 Epiphone Blackbird. And I thought, perfect, I'm going to get that one. I did get it, sounded amazing when I tested it, really rocked out on it, very happy camper, but brought the boom brought the bass back to the rehearsal, played some rock songs, great, over to one of the softer songs, and then it hit me. The Blackbird has two options, loud and very loud. It's a great rock bass, but it's not as, as versatile as a standard Thunderbird, so it didn't really work out. But I still wanted the black one, so I bought the god version of the Thunderbird and at that point I had three Thunderbirds my original one, the Nikki 6 one and the god one and then I saw there was an alpine white one and white bases just look so awesome and I thought you know what it's a special edition I'm going to buy the white alpine, uh, the alpine white one so I ended up with four Thunderbirds and only played this one and that's not the end of the story. The year after, Thunder uh, Epiphone came out with a silver burst finish. The nicest finish for any instrument that I at least know of. So, yep, I got a fifth Thunderbird bass. I had this trusty one. I had the Nikki 6 Blackbird. I had the God Black one. I had the Alpine White limited edition one and I had the Silver Burst limited edition one. And most of all, I knew I had an addiction problem. So I got rid of the last four, kept this one as my workhorse and invested the money in some other bases with some other sounds. <coughs> well, that's my voice gone. Nice place to end. See you all next week.